Hello, my name is Ashley Collins and I'm going to tell you about some plants that are toxic to cattle, how to recognize the signs of poisoning, as well as give you a few pointers on getting rid of these unwanted plants in pastures. So before we get into talking about some of the plants that could actually cause concern for producers, it is important to note that most toxic plants are not very palatable. So that means as long as the herd has something else to eat, they will tend to steer clear of the bad plants and only munch on the good forage. Another thing that kind of works in our favor is that it usually takes a pretty high amount of consumption of any of these plants to cause severe problems. This is still a relevant and important topic in the industry, however, because consumption of these plants can affect the health and survival rates of a herd, and therefore, this affects the bottom line of the producer. So we're going to talk about a few species or classes of plants that can cause problems for producers. So the plants that we're going to talk about today include lupines, death commas, nightshades, poison hemlock, water hemlock, and larkspurs. Although these plants do not grow in the southeastern portion of the U.S., this information will be helpful to those who either work in the industry or plan on working in the cattle producing industry because they grow in the mid to western United States, which is where most cattle production occurs. Let's move on to identifying some of the signs that clearly indicate that an animal has consumed a toxic plant. Some of the clear symptoms of poisoning include excessive salivation or foaming at the mouth, muscle weakness, faster weak pulse, difficulty breathing, lethargy, elevated body temperature, and blood in urine or feces. This list is not all inclusive and of course anything out of the norm should be taken seriously and if any of these symptoms do occur, you should contact a vet immediately to get the animal evaluated. So now that we've done kind of an introduction, let's talk about specific plants. So lupines are beautiful and they're highly prevalent, especially during wet seasons. Now consumption of lupines is especially a concern for pregnant cattle since the calf can develop crooked calf syndrome. This happens when the female eats the plant during early gestation and essentially causes the calf to be born with a cleft palate or a number of skeletal defects. This is due to the level of alkaloids within the plant and the plant is especially toxic during its early growth stages. In addition to the crooked calf syndrome, lupines can also cause general poisoning in any age of cattle. Death commas are a class of plants that grow in the western U.S. They contain steroidal alkaloids, which are bad news because they can severely disrupt respiration as well as the heartbeat. And these plants can be an issue because they're often some of the first to grow back in the spring before the good forage has returned. So you can combat this by offering plenty of good quality hay that the cattle will choose preferentially. However, if they do consume it, signs of poisoning are consistent with the symptoms that were listed in the beginning of this video. So, nightshade is usually not consumed by animals as it is highly unpalatable. However, it is sometimes accidentally baled into hay or accidentally taken up while grazing. So, if it is consumed, it can cause acute poisoning if it's taken in, in large amounts which then leads to paralysis and death. It can also cause chronic symptoms if it's eaten over a period of time, and those symptoms include general poor body condition and a poor coat. Poison hemlock can also cause crooked calf syndrome, similar to lupines, if the mother consumes the plant during early pregnancy. This is once again due to the levels of alkaloids within the plant, and although poison hemlock is unpalatable, as little as 10 ounces can actually kill cattle within an hour due to respiratory paralysis. 
While water hemlock may look very similar to poison hemlock, they are in fact completely different plants, and water hemlock is actually more poisonous than poison hemlock, as it can kill within only 15 minutes. This quick death is due to the contents of circutoxin within the plant. Circutoxin is a poisonous, unsaturated alcohol. As its name may suggest, water hemlock does grow in wetlands or along waterways. So if your pasture borders a river or a stream, it is crucial to check for the plant. Signs of poisoning include convulsions, and unfortunately once the animal exhibits this sign, it is often too late, and by the time a vet makes it to the scene, the animal will have already passed away. Larkspurs, similar to other toxic plants, contain alkaloids. It is also one of the first plants to grow back in the spring, like death commas, and it is most dangerous during its young growth stages. If it is eaten in a fairly decent amount, it can cause neuromuscular paralysis, difficulty breathing, and severe bloat. Now that we've gotten a basic rundown of some common toxic plants, let's talk about some steps that producers can take to help decrease occurrences of poisoning and avoid losses that would decrease their profit. A common and relatively easy and expensive fix for unwanted weed growth is applying herbicide to the affected pasture in the spring, especially when the plants are just starting to come in. Summer is also a good time because weed killer works best when the plants are actively growing. Temperatures should be warm or the herbicide will not be as effective. So let's talk about a couple popular options. 2,4-D controls annual, perennial, and biannual broadleaf plants. It is relatively inexpensive and animals only need to be kept off of the sprayed pasture for 7 days. It works best when weeds are in their pre-emergent stage. Dicamba is commonly mixed in with other herbicides to increase effectiveness and control perennials especially. It does, however, have a longer grazing restriction at 21 days. Overdrive is similar to dicamba, but it actually has no grazing restrictions. So this obviously would be beneficial if the producer is somewhat land restricted or if they don't have an indoor space to keep the cattle for an extended period of time. Of course, there are many other herbicides, and if you'd like to learn more, I will provide a link in the description that has some common herbicides. Overall, it is critical to be observant both in terms of animal behavior and in terms of plants within your pasture. If for whatever reason, treating with herbicide is not an option or you simply don't want to use those chemicals on your pasture, of course, you can always go in manually, either by hand or with a tool that removes the plant from the root and remove the plants from the pasture. In the long run, although this manual way may take a little bit longer, it may be a more permanent solution because you're removing the plant from the root and restricting its future growth. So that's all I have time for in this video, but I hope you learned something new and if you are interested in reading more, all of my references will be listed in the description box below. Thank you and have a great day!